the favorite of the show. <laughs> why, why do women have hair around the pussy? <laughs> why? <laughs> Come on, you know the answer. To hide the hook? <laughs> Guys, when we're hooked, right. we'll open the doors to the vault. You know it, I know it. So be careful if you're going to come here and get hooked. Hey guys, we're back with Joe and Aaron, our little mini series here. What is this, part three? This is part three, Joe. Part three, part three, which we're talking about the Ukrainian woman pickup challenge. Get right on. Which, uh, I, uh, Aaron came to sue me, he was not a client of Magic Guarantee. He was, uh, let's call a spade a spade, Aaron, skeptical. <laughs> he wanted to check us out and see right. what is this Magic Guarantee. So he came to our offices and sue me. He thought, hey, you know what, Joe, I, um, I want to try my luck on my own and see how I do. And I said, cool, uh, right? Right away. Right away. First right day away. you came and I yes. said, tell you what, if you're serious about meeting your own ladies, I'll help you out. Why don't we hand out roses to some ladies on the right. streets of Sumi, Ukraine and see if we can get you some phone numbers. Right on. And you did that. We did that. And I'm going to show some footage during this interview right now, during this uh, talk of, uh, of that uh, event. Where right. So maybe you want to tell the story <laughs> uh, succinctly uh, of what we did. And, and most importantly, what's your conclusion? What, what did you experience? What was your takeaway from doing that, giving out 20 uh, roses to 20 lovely ladies? Sumi. Um, it took the fear factor totally out of me. The, the city that a week ago I was a little bit scared of getting out late at night since the day when I gave the roses away, it just changed to me like a day and night. I had a better understanding of the people, the girls, the ladies. We were picking up um, very, very normal um, average citizens of the city who were going home or they were sitting on the benches in the park. And I was going straight with a rose and I was telling them that you are beautiful, this rose is for you, you're gorgeous, today's a beautiful day. You know, a little speech that is really um, normal, nothing really specific, uh, without any expectations. But before I end up my conversation with them, I was asking if it was appropriate to have their number or have gave them my number. And um, I had a lot of numbers that day. Uh, not a lot of date came out of this exchange of numbers, but something almost spiritual came out of this, which was, um, it, it just brought me closer to some reality that these ladies are very decent, very accessible, very kind, and uh, with just one flower that costs nothing here, you can bring a big smile in their faces and um, they are very friendly. They are very friendly people. They just need more attention from the guys. Unfortunately, I think Ukrainian men are not paying a lot of attention to their women, and this is what they love with the Western men. And um, it was a great experience. I loved it, and thank you so much for helping me and uh, coaching me through all this experience. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Aaron. <laughs> and you know, you make some great points. I would completely concur uh, with you. You know, Russian Ukrainian women are really labeled as being cold biatches right on. in the world, uh, too much so. And you know, when you come here and you, you see that's not the truth. Are, do they have a shell, a cold exterior? Mm, yeah, a lot of them do. But just be, beneath that, Shell is a very warm, loving, caring, amazing woman. Right. That's what you'll find if you actually, you know, give this uh, endeavor some effort. And, and wasn't it amazing uh, when you presented the <laughs> rose to the to each lady? How warmly she reacted. How appreciate you could sense the appreciation, the big smile. Absolutely, absolutely. It was genuine. Gen it was from the heart. Mm -hmm. It was not show. It was not like big. Oh my God! Or oh la la! Or high five. It was. Uh, tell me more. Tell me more. Give me more. Bring me more happiness. Talk to me. Who you are? What you do here? What you looking for? You need my phone number. They gave me your, their phone number in a heartbeat. I was giving them my phone number before I leave the benches and getting away from some of them. They were already recording my phone number in their, in their telephone. Um, I don't care if they called me or they didn't call me, 
but uh, the approach was very humane. Something that I've been a little bit around the world, something that I can never do in New York, certainly not in Washington DC, or in Paris, or in Bruxelles, but I did it here and it worked like impeccable. Well, let me call you on something though, Aaron. Uh, you said you got a ton of phone numbers, but come on. <laughs> okay, let, yes. it's true. The first ladies we approached, <laughs> they were entering your number uh, because you gave your, you, you kept uh, taking the easy route and offering your phone number. Uh, but yeah, they were actually entering your number in and that was the first ladies. And, and the one lady was quite attractive, I thought. Quite, right quite yeah. cute. And then, yeah. and then maybe the other lady was her mom or right. older sister. I think it was mom. So that's true, but how many phone numbers did you actually, that they gave you? Come on, be honest now. I had at least eight, if it's not ten. Ten, ten Are numbers. you shitting me? Oh. Come on. I, Come you on. know, it's funny because. Tell me, did you have one? The one. That gave you her phone number. You gave your phone number, but you didn't get any phone numbers. No, I did not. No, 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 no. I gave my phone number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gave your phone number, but you didn't get one phone number. Uh, I think that's a conclusion. It, it was successful in the in the respect of um, positive reaction from the ladies. Right. Um, but yeah, the, you need to know this is a tip for guys. When you ask for a Ukrainian uh, lady's phone number, and if she, it's a def, it's a deflection. It, it's a diversionary tactic. They will say, "Oh, well, give me your phone number." Right. Uh, and you'll never hear from. Them. Did you ever get a call from any of the ladies? No. Right. I did not. So, so, and you need to know that that's what the women here predominantly do. They will say, "Give me your phone number," and it's uh, it's there, right. sl slagging you off, right? <laughs> um, because in Ukraine culture, they don't want to be rude to anybody. Right. They're very um, sensitive this way. So it's their way of uh, not hurting your feelings. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, because you were giving a lot of uh, roses to really young girls. Right. 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 right, I did that. Yeah, and episode one was uh, chasing the wrong skirt, and so Aaron came here chasing the wrong skirts. <laughs> it happens. It, it happens. happens. But but you have course corrected now. You've learned your lessons, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think uh, something is very important for people to understand that most guys, when they are coming here, they are going through a divorce or a long period of being alone. When we are alone. We need to sharpen our skills back to normal in order to pick up girls. And uh, this is something that you don't do in the streets of uh, maybe United States or in a lot of places because you don't have time or you don't have the motivation. All that happened to me here in a very such a short time. And um, maybe I was not very skillful to ask phone numbers and contact them and be more aggressive about picking up girls. Maybe I was not very uh, uh, up to the speed, but it, it came very quickly. It came very quickly. Well, you were, you know, it was a successful uh, campaign. Absolutely. Uh, a social experiment. Yes. And, and it's a good point, Aaron. I mean, you've been single for 12 years. Right. So a lot of dust on the feathers. You <laughs> <laughs> to shake off. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's a good way, you know, it, it overcame your, uh, your, your fear factor, as right. you say. Right. Got you out there. After yes. that, yes. you were mixing with the ladies on the streets even more. Um, th those things... With words are very easy and simple words, but in reality, it's priceless. I mean, there's no price that you can put and compare to get someone out of the solitude life, which is totally uh, depressive, uh, which is not cool to live every day. Now, once you have a hope inside, it's just going to grow every day and you cannot stop it anymore. That is priceless. This is something that um, it's not an advice, but it's my personal experience to share with those who have been alone for a very long time. It's not the end of the world. And uh, if I can make it, you can make it. You just have to book the ticket and come over, period. That's it. Yeah, you can get some experience and you can go on some dates. Yes. Uh, you can catch lots of catch and releases. Yes. Well, maybe not lots, but uh, if you're, if you're lucky uh, you'll have a relationship with a catch and release but Aaron that's your your main lesson right that you've learned yes. that there's yes. there's catch and release <laughs> but <laughs> but your goal Aaron's goal as he shared with us 
here is to find somebody for the rest of his life. Absolutely. A life partner, yeah. a wife. Yeah. yeah. And so catch and release, while it might be a little bit of fun as you get the dust off the feathers, but it's not serving your goal. No. Right? So on your second no. trip, you've learned to come back and what have you learned? Maybe some takeaways for what you're going to do different next trip. So next trip, I will come and before I land in Kiev, I will be a member with MatchGuarantee.com. That's very important for me. Match Guarantee, without being a member, it was tremendously generous with me, with my transportation and with all my questions and visits and uh, whining and dining and everything. So next trip, once I become matchguarantee.com, I'm sure that I will go back with a very big smile on my face and happy and eventually, hopefully, with the wife of my life. Cool. So the, <laughs> the big lesson you learned was to be realistic, right? You have to. Yeah. And, um, you know, on that point, I mean, you took your chances, you did everything, you, you know, very commendable, very brave what you did. You got a great result uh, in terms of understanding culture, the do's and the don'ts more. You learned a lot, so you stacked the deck for your future success. But at the end of the day, I think, Aaron, would you agree that you, you've learned that in order to be successful here, the reality is uh, this culture will marry younger. Right. Right? Right. Uh, my uh, Russian wife was 10 years um, younger than myself. Right. And that's a normal age difference here. Mm. 10, 12, pushing it 15 years. Right. And that's if you're in shape, you look good. Right. Look maybe a little younger for your age. You keep yourself in shape. In right. Shape. Right. Um, but to push that 15 years, it's just, it's just really risky. It's not the, it's, it, it's mm -hmm. not the normal reality. No, no. Right. Um, yeah, people, so, people have to realize and they have to that conclusion on their own terms. Yeah, it, it, some guys have to you know, try it out and see for themselves. Aaron, before we end this, let's tell this hilarious story you just told me over breakfast this morning. So Aaron went on a date last night. <laughs> Do you want to tell that story? Because it's bloody hilarious. With Alina? With Alina? No, 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 no. With the, the, the 21-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, she... Showed you pictures and said, what? Uh, this 21 years old that I met in a coffee shop, she was working there, beautiful little, sometime their face, oh, and anyway, to make a long story short, we exchanged phone number and we were sending messages back and forth and last night I went to see her and I realized very quickly that she was very, very young and physically she was petite, so it was not really my type. And, but, but the conversation was very nice and cordial, and she was complimenting me, so it was, I was listening, and we were sipping our coffee. Quickly, I realized that there is no future with her. I, I figured out that part, and we pronounced it to each other, that I'm not going to hit on you, so this, there's nothing between you and me. But she told me that as soon as I saw you, I recognized a lot of good quality of a good man in you. And I was very happy to, to listen next, and I was listening so carefully. And then she showed me some picture of her mom, who's divorced. And, um, and then she was trying to set up a date between her mom and myself. And her mom was 10 years younger than me. She was 40, I'm 49. And her mom looked very, very hot on the pictures from what I saw. And uh, it was very funny and hilarious, but uh, in any way... Uh, yeah, that was like, you, you, you added over breakfast that she said, you know, if I brought you home to my mom, <laughs> that would be the best present. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So you see, guys, this true story that just happened last night, it, it shows you a lot of things, right? Yes. It shows yes. you that it's true, uh, the rumor, right. that there's an incredible number of beautiful, amazing, right. smart, sexy, talented, younger ladies that are lonely ladies in Ukraine. Right. Not right. enough men to go around here. Certainly not enough good men, according right. to the Ukrainian ladies. So there you see an example. Um, you also see an example of a much younger girl, like 21, that would go out with a 49-year-old. That just wouldn't happen back in the real world. Back in my neighborhood, <laughs> if that happens, someone will call the police on me. But... Uh, but, 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 but it, it exists. It is out here there. It, it exists, and, but it is the age gap. Trap. 
and I yes. emphasize the word trap because yes, it's yes, a yes. trap, guys. Yeah. Don't again sort of yeah. pound at home. Right. But I'm a fellow dude, so I get you, right? We think with the wrong head. You just right. need to know it's not reality. Right. You can go there here in Ukraine, but right. it's catch and release, right? right? So if you're coming here and you tell yourself you're here to find a long-lasting relationship with somebody to marry and till death to his part, then you're just deluding yourself. That's not ever going to be your reality. Never say never, but right it's on. one in a million that a 21-year-old could be with a 49-year-old, even a 25-year-old with a, with a 49-year-old. So... Um, Especially in the United States, if somebody is going through the pain of taking off, not working, paying for round trip, coming all the way to here and live in a hotel, all that costs a lot of money. And if you spend your time on catch and release, it's going to be very expensive catch and release. Well, yeah, because your heart strings, I mean, when yours asks you to pay the, the visa bill. Absolutely. They have all that in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. and a lot of guys do it. Uh, buy uh, iPhone, you know, tens. Pay off the credit card bill. Pay the utility bill. Uh, buy a flat screen TV for two thousand dollars. I mean, I've heard and seen it all. And once the hook is in, and let me tell you my favorite <laughs> show. <laughs> why, why do women out there around the pussy? <laughs> why? <laughs> Come on, you know the answer. To hide the hook. <laughs> Guys, when we're hooked. Right. We'll open the doors to the vault. You know it, I know it. So be careful if you're going to come here and get hooked. Right? Be Just smart. Be smart. Know, know what you want. That's what I always come back to. Know what you want. So if you're, if, you, if you're telling yourself you're serious, you want to come and meet somebody that's serious for marriage, then um, yeah, don't, uh, don't do catch and release. It's going to be expensive and you're going to end up with a broken heart and a broken wallet. So let's end the clip on that one, Aaron. Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Thank okay. you so much. Thanks again, Aaron. And we're going to come back because I'm going to ask Aaron if he could share his really personal 12-year singleness story with us. Okay. See you soon. Thank you.